I believe that uh, class mobility um, can be, and in various uh, periods of time, and particularly here in the United States, uh, it functioned as uh, a support for the system. Uh, you know, as a nation of immigrants, since we ethnically cleansed uh, the people that were found here by the Europeans when they came, uh, as wave after wave of immigrants, uh, a thriving, rising capitalism was able to absorb wave after wave. What we are, in fact, experiencing now, and where I might slightly disagree with you, I think that between climate change and a exhaustion of capitalism, this uh, global mobility, particularly here in the United States, has stopped. And that it, if you want to understand why Mr. Trump took the slogan, make America great again, well, one explanation is that we've had mobility, it's just in the other direction. And that people who are not able either to have mobility or to reasonably expect it are very bitter and angry that that was taken away, see the decline threatening them all around and want someone like Trump uh, to save them from it. You are also correct about China. Uh, sometimes uh, when I wanna wake up an American audience, uh, I, I say to them, that over the last four decades, 40 years, the real wage, average real wage in China quadrupled, whereas the average real wage in the United States went nowhere, stagnated, you know, went up at a rate less than one half of 1% per year on average. You could not have a starker difference in the experience of the mass of the working class so in China, yeah, you can anticipate upward mobility if it is measured uh, by consumption. But if I had time, I would worry you about that measure. Because, yeah, you may have more consumption, but on the job, you are uh, an employee caught in a fundamentally undemocratic system and if the working class were to finally get the message that its goals not only can be, but should be not just improved wages and working conditions, because even if you struggle as a worker for better wages and working conditions, and even if you win better wages and working conditions, as long as you are part of an undemocratic structure, those wins are never secure. The employer class can take back what you won from it as long as that class structure survives. During the 1930s and 40s, something called the New Deal Coalition in the United States won incredible gains as the American working class went to the left politically. In the depths of the depression, when the government had no money, that coalition won social security that had never existed in America before. Unemployment compensation at the federal level that had never existed in America before a minimum wage that had never existed in the America before, and a government jobs program employing 15 million unemployed workers, the likes of which we had never seen before, or for that matter, since. But after the war was over, when Roosevelt was dead, the business class of America went to work to undo the New Deal. And they have come a very long way. Let me remind you, we just went through two terrible experiences of unemployment 
during which neither the Republican nor the Democratic Party proposed, let alone enacted, a massive program of government jobs, even though we did that in the 30s with great success. Wow. Let me remind you that the last time we raised the minimum wage in America was in the year 2009, when it was raised to the glorious level of $7.25 per hour, which it is today, because neither Republicans nor Democrats saw their way clear to raise the minimum wage any time since 2009. And let me remind you that in every year since 2009, prices of goods and services in America went up, meaning that the poorest of the poor saw their standard of living depressed by more than 20% over these last 12 years. What an amazing achievement of American capitalism. Wow. So I think we have to understand, you have to put this question of the lack of democratic control over the workplace front and center for the working class, a core of the socialist program, because it's the only way to secure the gains struggle can sometimes win. To the history of the United States, I would say, the Great Depression shows what an organized working class led by the labor movement, and in those days, two socialist and one communist party, what that can achieve is stunning. We've been there, we've done that. But what can be lost afterwards if you don't have democratic control over the workplace? That's equally stunning and offers us an equally important lesson. Anyway, thank you for your understanding. I am happy to tell you that I do have a TV interview because ideas like mine from being on the margins of American culture are now much closer to the center than you might imagine. And it gives people like me opportunities we never thought we would see. And that's also part of the good news. Thank you very much. And I would love to speak to the Community Church of Boston again anytime we can work out the details.